All right, welcome back. Let's start with this example. We want to approximate the integral from zero to two of x cubed dx using Simpson's rule for n equals eight. And so what this means is that we're going to be approximating the area under x cubed from zero to two using eight sub intervals. That's what n tells us. It tells us how many sub intervals we are using for Simpson's rule. And so in order to approximate the area under a function using Simpson's rule, you need to know the formula for Simpson's rule. And that formula is that the area is equal to S sub n, which means Simpson's rule with an n number of sub intervals, and that is equal to delta x, the width of those sub intervals, divided by three times our function evaluated at our first value of x, x sub zero, plus four times f of x sub one, plus two times f of x sub two, plus four times f of x sub three, and then we continue to add those up till four times f of x sub n minus one, and then we add that to f of x sub n. Right, so your value of n, in this case n equals eight, determines how many of these terms you will have in this quantity. And so since we have n equal to eight, that means our last term here will be f of x sub eight. And notice that for our terms in here, how the coefficients of the terms alternate. So we start and end with a coefficient of one, right? We just have one times f of x sub zero. And over here we have one times f of x sub n. But in between, we have a pattern that alternates between four and two. We multiply four by f of x sub one, then two times f of x sub two, and then four again times f of x sub three, and we go all the way to the end till we have four times f of x sub n minus one, or whatever value would be before your last value. And so you're gonna to wanna to keep that in mind as we write out what this would be for this scenario. And so since we know that n is equal to eight, we'll have that this is equal to s sub eight, and that will be equal to delta x divided by three times f of x sub zero plus four times f of x sub one plus two times f of x sub two plus four times f of x sub three and then we're going to alternate back to multiplying by two for our next term, right? We're going four, two, four, two, four, two. So we'll have plus two times f of x sub four plus four times f of x sub five plus two times f of x sub six plus four times f of x sub seven. And then we will add f of x sub eight. And I just barely fit that all in there. And so if this is hard to read at the end, this is just f of x sub eight. Okay, so we alternated between multiplying by four and two for each of our terms in between here, but our first and our last term are only multiplied by one. All right, and so then in order to proceed with this calculation, we need to know what delta x is equal to, and that is the width of our sub intervals, and delta x is equal to b minus a divided by n. And so we know what n is, n is equal to eight, that is the number of sub intervals, but b and a are going to come from your integral from a to b, right? So we have an integral from zero to two, which means that our value of a is zero and our value of b is two, right? That is the region that we are looking for the area of. We're looking for the area under x cubed from zero to two. And so delta x will be equal to two minus zero divided by n, which is eight, and that will be equal to one fourth, right? Two divided by eight would be one fourth. And so this will be equal to one fourth times one third Right, you could rewrite this as being delta x times one third. And so we have one fourth, which is delta x times one third. And then that will be multiplied by f of x sub zero, right? And so what is x sub zero? Well, x sub zero is always going to be your lower bound. And so in this case, we're gonna start at zero. And so we'll have f of zero. And then we're going to add that to four times f of x sub one. And so now how do we find the rest of our x values here? Well, all we have to do is continually add delta x, or the width of our sub intervals, to find our next value of x, right? So in order to find x sub one, we need to add one fourth to our previous value of x, x sub zero. So zero plus one fourth would be one fourth. And then we will add this to two times f of x sub two. And to find x sub two, we need to add another one fourth to our previous value of x, which is x sub one, which we found was one fourth. So one fourth plus one fourth is two fourths, and that would reduce to one half, but we'll do that later. But then let's move on to our next term. We'll have plus four times f of x sub three, which to get x sub three, we will have to add another delta x of one fourth to our previous value of x, which we said was two fourths. And so that will be three fourths. 
And then we will continue to do this for the rest of our x values. We will just continually add another 1 fourth to each value of x. And so we'll have plus 2 times f of 4 fourths for x sub 4, right? We just add another fourth to 3 fourths. And then we'll have plus 4 times f of 5 fourths. And then plus 2 times f of 6 fourths plus 4 times f of 7 fourths. And then we'll have plus f of 8 fourths. Okay, so now we have all of our values of x. And so now if we want to calculate this area, we have to plug each of those values of x into our function, which in this case would be x cubed, right? Our function is going to be whatever is inside our integral. And so in this case, x cubed is f of x. And so if we plug each of these values into x cubed, we will have the following. We'll have that this is equal to 1 fourth times 1 third. That's going to be equal to 1 twelfth. So I'm going to write 1 twelfth times f of 0, that'll be 0 cubed, plus 4 times 1 fourth cubed, plus 2 times 1 half cubed, right? 2 fourths can be reduced to 1 half, and then we'll have plus 4 times 3 fourths cubed, and then we're going to have plus 2 times 1 cubed, right? 4 fourths is just 1, and then we'll add this to 4 times 5 fourths cubed, plus 2 times 3 halves cubed, right? 6 divided by 4 would reduce to 3 divided by 2, or 6 fourths is 3 halves. And so then we'd have plus 4 times 7 fourths cubed, and then we'd have plus 2 cubed for our last term, because 8 divided by 4, or 8 fourths, is equal to 2. All right, and so then if we clean up our work here, we will have that this is equal to 1 twelfth times 0 cubed is 0, plus 4 times 1 fourth cubed, so every time we cube one of these values, we're going to need to cube the numerator and the denominator. So one cubed is one, and then four cubed is 64. And then we'll add that to two times one half cubed. We'll have one divided by eight because two cubed right here is eight. And then we'll add this to four times three cubed, which is 27, divided by four cubed, which is 64, plus two times one cubed. One cubed is just one, so that's gonna be plus two because two times one is just two. And then we'll add that to four times five cubed divided by four cubed. So we'll have 125, that's what five cubed is, divided by 64, plus two times three cubed divided by two cubed. So we'll have 27 divided by eight. And then we will have plus four times seven cubed divided by four cubed. And seven cubed is 343. So we'll have 343 divided by four cubed, which is 64 and that will be added to two cubed, which is eight. All right, and so then if we simplify this, we'll have that this is equal to 1 12th times, and we don't need to write this zero anymore, but we'll have four times 1 64th. Four and 64 can both be divided by four, and so we'll be left with 1 16th, and then we'll have plus two times 1 8th, which will be 1 4th, plus four times 27 divided by 64. Once again, every time you see this four and a denominator of 64, it's gonna be reduced to just having 16 in the denominator. So we're going to have 27 sixteenths, and then plus that two, that's not going to change. Then four times 125 sixty-fourths. Once again, that denominator will be reduced to 16. So we'll have plus 125 sixteenths, plus two times 27 eighths, Two and eight will reduce to just four in the denominator. So we'll have 27 fourths plus four times 343 divided by 64. So we'll have 343 divided by 16 and then plus eight. All right, so then if we want to simplify this even further, we'll add up all of our fractions with similar denominators. So we have 1 16th, 27 sixteenths, 125 sixteenths, and 343 sixteenths. If we add up all of those numerators and keep the same denominator, this will be equal to 1 12th times 496 sixteenths. And then next we will add all of our fractions with four in the denominator, which I think we just have two of those. We have 1 fourth and 27 fourths. And so we have 28 fourths. And then just so you can see which terms I've already used, we have used all of our 16th terms. So I'll just cross those out. And we just used 1 fourth and 27 fourths. And so now let's add together our remaining terms, which are 2 and 8. And so we'll have plus 10 because 2 plus 8 is 10. All right. And so then 496 is actually divisible by 16. 
That's equal to 31. So we'll have that this is equal to 1 12th times 31 plus 28 divided by 4. 28 is divisible by 4. That's equal to 7. So we'll have 7 and then plus 10. And so somehow we now have all whole numbers, which is pretty nice. 31 plus 7 is 38 and then plus 10 is 48. So this is equal to 1 12th times 48. And then 48 is actually divisible by 12. And so 1 12th times 48 is equal to 4 because 48 divided by 12 is 4. And so this is our approximate value for the area under this function x cubed from 0 to 2. Right? This is what we found using Simpson's rule with n equals 8 or 8 sub intervals. All right, and so now if you want to see how close this approximate value is to the actual area under this function, we can solve this definite integral using our integration techniques, and that would give us the actual area. And so if you want to see that work, I'll have it up here on the screen for you to look at. And so you can pause the video if you'd like, but what you'll find is that the actual area is also 4, and so Simpson's rule actually got us the exact value of the area, which isn't always going to happen, but it did happen in this case. And so what we can conclude is that Simpson's rule gives us a pretty good approximation, if not the exact area, of a region under a function. All right, and so if you're done looking at the work on the screen, we will move on to our next and final example. All right, so here's our next and last example. We want to approximate the integral from zero to four of the square root of one plus x squared dx. And we want to use Simpson's rule for n equals six, which means we are using six sub intervals. And so in this case, we'll have that the area or the approximate area will be equal to Simpson's rule using six sub intervals or s sub six. And that will be equal to delta x divided by three times f of x sub zero. And then we're going to have six of these x values, right? Whatever our n is equal to, that's how many of those x values we're going to have after x sub zero. So we're going to work our way up to x sub six, remembering to keep that pattern for Simpson's rule that we multiply our terms by four and then two and then four and then two, except for our first term and our last term where we will have f of x sub six. And so our next term will be plus four times f of x sub one, right? We always start by multiplying by four and then we alternate between two and four. And then we'll have plus two times f of x sub two, plus four times f of x sub three, plus two times f of x sub four, plus four times f of x sub five, and then plus f of x sub six. All right, and so then to calculate this area or to use this formula, we need to figure out what delta x is equal to. And we know that delta x is equal to b minus a divided by n, and b and a come from our integral Right, so our lower bound is a and our upper bound is b. So we have zero for a and four for b. And n, we are told is equal to six. So that means delta x is equal to four minus zero divided by six. And that is equal to four sixths, which can be reduced to two thirds. And so delta x is equal to two thirds. And so we'll have that this is equal to two thirds times one third. Right, once again, we can just rewrite this to be delta x times one third. And so we have two thirds, which is delta x times one third. And that will be multiplied by f of x sub zero. And x sub zero is always going to be your lower bound, which in this case is zero. So we have f of zero. And then we will add four times f of x sub one. And remember, to find our values of x after x sub zero, we need to add delta x, the width of our sub intervals, to find the next value of x. And we need to add that delta x to the previous value of x that we calculated. And so zero, our first value of x, x sub zero, plus two thirds will be two thirds. And then we'll have plus two times f of x sub two. And so to get x sub two, we will add two thirds to our previous value of x, x sub one, which was two thirds. And so two thirds plus two thirds is four thirds. And then we will add that to four times f of x sub three. And once again, to get x sub three, we will need to add another two thirds to our previous value of x, x sub two. And so four thirds plus another two thirds would be six thirds. Now that's equal to two, but I will reduce that later. And then we'll add this to two times f of x sub four. We will add another two thirds. And so we will have eight thirds. And then we will have four times f of x sub five, which if we add another two thirds, we will have 10 thirds. And then we will add that to f of x sub six, which if we add one more two thirds, we will get 12 thirds, which is also equal to four. All right, and so then if we simplify this, we'll have that this is equal to two ninths, right? Two times one is two, and three times three is nine. 
and that will be multiplied by our function evaluated at zero. And so we're going to have the square root of one plus zero squared, right? Our function in this case is the square root of one plus x squared. In fact, I'll just label that here real quick. This is f of x. And so we're gonna be plugging each of these values into this square root function. And so then we'll have plus four times the square root of one plus two thirds squared plus two times the square root of one plus four thirds squared plus four times the square root of one plus two squared, right? Six divided by three is two, so we have two squared rather than six thirds squared. And then we'll have plus two times the square root of one plus eight thirds squared. And then we'll have plus four times the square root of one plus 10 thirds squared. And then I ran out of space here, but we'll just add the last term at the bottom here we'll have plus the square root of one plus four squared, right? Because we have 12 divided by three, which is four, and that will be our last term. All right, and so then if we clean up our work here, this will be equal to two ninths times the square root of one, which is just one, right? We have the square root of one plus zero, so that's just one plus zero, which is one, and the square root of one is one, and then we'll have plus four times the square root of one plus two squared divided by three squared, and so that will be four divided by nine plus two times the square root of one plus four thirds squared. So we're gonna have four squared divided by three squared and that will be 16 divided by nine. And then we'll have plus four times the square root of one plus two squared. So that's gonna be one plus four. So that means that we're going to have five. And then we will add that to two times the square root of one plus eight thirds squared. So that will be one plus 64 divided by nine and then we will add four times the square root of one plus 10 thirds squared, and 10 squared is 100, and that will be divided by three squared, which is nine. And then for our last term, we have one plus four squared. Four squared is 16, so we'll have 16 plus one, and that means this will be the square root of 17. So I'll try to fit that in here, plus the square root of 17. All right, and so then we could go through and simplify these square roots if we wanted to, right? We could add one to four ninths, add one to 16 ninths and add one to 64 ninths and so on. And so you could go through and simplify these a little bit more, or you could just plug all of these values into your calculator and then multiply them by two ninths. And if you did that, you would find that this is equal to 9.29433386. And there are some more decimals there, but this is the approximate value of the area of the square root of one plus X squared from zero to four. All right, this is what we found using Simpson's rule with six sub intervals. All right, and so if you're curious how close this is to the actual value of the area under this function from zero to four, you would need to compare it to integrating this function from zero to four, right? If we solve this definite integral using integration techniques. However, at this point in calculus, you do not know the proper techniques to integrate a function like this. You're not gonna be able to use u substitution or any of the other methods you may know. This requires a more advanced technique that you are not currently responsible for knowing. And so I'm just going to give you the value that solving this definite integral would give you. And that is that the integral from zero to four of the square root of one plus x squared dx is equal to 9.29 and some more decimals. And so this is the actual area from zero to four underneath this function. And you can see just how close it is to our approximation using Simpson's rule. At least to the second decimal place, they are exactly the same. We have 9.29 and 9.29. And then it differs from the third place on, but I would say that this is a pretty good approximation of that actual area, okay? And so with that, this was the last example I had for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.